So thus far, when we've been talking about scope, we've kind of been dancing around this magical idea of a watch list. And it's important to understand what's going on in the background with the digest loop. And so we've talked about dirty checking, but as you add more and more to what the digest loop has to iterate through, you could see performance degradation. And it could come from a number of places, but essentially we want to make as few trips through the watch list as possible. And at the same time, we want to iterate through as few things on the watch list as possible. So when we're doing things like direct data binding in the view, obviously there's not a way to optimize that because it has to be bound and it has to be updated when scope.apply is called. However, when we add scope watchers manually that are evaluating functions or something to that degree, we have to be careful and maintain when they should be watched and when we can release them. So you can see here, we've got a watcher on the num value, which is initialized to zero. And the callback when this changes is going to push that scope.num value onto nums, which we have here initialized to empty. And then the increment method, which will be triggered by the button is going to increment num. So if we see this working here, we should see that value is increasing by one and it's getting pushed on the array. Okay, awesome, this is working. Let's say for the sake of either the functionality of our application or to optimize performance, we want to stop the watching of this value. And this, as you can imagine, could be useful in a lot of places, especially when you're talking to external real-time resources or something to that degree where you want to break off the watcher or something to that effect. So when you're setting a scope.watcher, when this is evaluated, when the controller is initialized, it's going to return a method because recall that when we're setting scope.watch on this value, it's going to watch it for the lifetime of the controller, which could be not ideal in our scenario. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the function that's returned when we assign the scope.watch and we're going to assign it to the scope. I'm going to call the function break it. And then we can use this method and when we invoke it, it will remove the watcher and this callback will no longer happen. So let's stick this on a button. Ng click equals break it. Refresh. So what should be happening now is we see increment is still working. The function that's returned from the watcher is going to remove the value from the watch list and prevent the callback from happening. So we'll hit break it. And then when we hit increment again, you can see that this value is going up, but it's not being pushed onto the array. So this is a valuable way of maintaining your watch list size and keeping it as short as possible. You don't have to be super aggressive about keeping a short list. If it builds up a little bit, that's okay because obviously a watcher by itself is a very lightweight operation. The only time you have to worry is when a watcher can cascade to other values in the watch list being updated. What I mean by that is that if you have, let's say, something in the watch list, so let's pretend that this is our watch list. We'll say we're watching something num, we're watching val1, we're watching val2, and we're watching val3. Let's imagine that we have a watcher on val2, we have a watcher on val1, and we have some combinatoric watcher. Let's say the value of val2 changes, the watcher will see that and go, oh, let's enter the digest cycle and let's start checking everything. And so it's going to check the values of everything. That's gonna be fine. However, if we have a watcher that is also watching val2 and is going to change a different value. So let's say we have a watcher that based on the value of val2 is gonna change the value of val1, then that itself is going to require another iteration of the digest cycle to make sure that nothing changes. Because remember that when the digest cycle is going, it's going to keep going and going until nothing else changes or until it reaches the maximum number of iterations that it will go through because it's possible that you're going to reach an infinite digest cycle and angular wants to avoid that. The idea that I'm trying to convey is don't make your watchers too convoluted. That having a really fat watch list is not a good way to build your application. So try and keep it as lean as possible. And you do that partially by just using smart coding practices in your Angular app, but also by breaking the watcher when you no longer need it.